So notice question eight says, it's giving us an instruction, divide the future value by the number of months to find the monthly payment. So what we're finding here is how much are we gonna to have to pay per month for 1.5 years in order to pay off this total amount at the end of this time period. So what we need to know is how many months are in the 1.5 years. So I know one year equals 12 months, and I know that one half a year or 0.5 of a year equals six months. So if we add those two numbers together, so the sum of these two means we have a total of 18 months for which we can spread out this total amount that we owe the loan sharks. So to, to do that, how much are we going to pay per month? We simply divide the $77,180 by the 18 months, and that's going to spit out our monthly payment. So using our handy Desmos app here, we are going to take that 77,180 divide by 18, and we're going to owe 4,000. $287 and approximately 78 cents. That'll give us a little bit extra. Um, our very last payment will be a couple cents short, um, probably 18 cents less. I don't know that's not right. But anyways, this, this would be the monthly payment we have to pay um, each month in order to pay off this total balance that we owe. So now let's look at some other types of applications of that simple interest uh, formula. So uh, in the prompt here, we're, we're told to note that there are actually four variables in that, that formula. There's the interest, which is I, the principal, which is P, the rate, which is the percent, and the time, which is T. In other words, we're taking this formula, I equals P times R times T, and we're noting that there's four quantities here that we would have to figure out. So far, we've been given these three and we've calculated interest, but what if we wanted to uh, kind of find other different things? What if we wanted to find the amount of principal we would have to, to borrow in order to only have to pay a certain amount of interest? So notice, notice this problem. The Phillips Health and Beauty Spa is replacing one of its workstations. The interest on a loan secured by the spa was 93.50, so that amount, that $93.50, that is our I. The problem then continues, the money was borrowed at a 5.5% interest, simple interest for two years. So our T here is two years, and our 5.5% interest rate is 5.5% divided by 100, which is that 0 0.055. Those are the three things we have. Look at the question. What was the amount that they borrowed? In other words, this question says, what does P equal? So if you look at the three things we've been given, we can simply substitute them into the different parts in our formula, and we can do some algebra, some solving for that missing variable. In other words, we know that 93.50 equals some principle that we have no clue what it is currently, times that 5.5% interest as a decimal, 0 0.055, times the two years that we borrowed the money for. In other words, the length of the loan. So um, we can solve this doing algebra. Note that we can multiply these two together and get a number and then divide both sides by that. So if I divide by 0 0.055 times two, both sides of the equation by this, I end up with the amount of principal that we borrowed. Back to our handy trusty Desmos app. We do 93.50 divided by 0 0.055 times 2, and we would have borrowed $850 originally at 5% interest for two years, and we ended up being charged $93.50 at the end of those two years. Page to 211, question four, we now have another problem that we give a different uh, amount of stuff and we're solving for something different. So this time we received an inheritance. Uh, for some reason, you're a married couple and you take an investment 
of $15,250. Apparently that's what you inherited from someone or something, who knows. So that's gonna be your principal. And you're gonna invest this for, or this married couple is investing this for 10 years and we're receiving $9,150 in simple interest. Notice that means our I is equal to $9,150. So the question here is what was the interest rate that you earned on that investment. Again, notice we were very careful to note that it was simple interest. So the thing we're looking for is R. Well, we go right to our simple interest formula, I equals P times R times T, plug in the pieces we have and solve for the missing piece, that R. So we know that the total interest earned was $9,150, that the principal we invested was $15,250. We don't know what that interest rate was. Remember, this is going to be a decimal when we solve for it. And we knew we invested this for 10 years. Now, you might remember this from a high school algebra class. The order you multiply things does not matter. So we could multiply the 10 times the 15,250. That ends up being 1,052,250. Zeros. Oh boy. Ha. Here it is. One thousand fifty two one hundred fifty two thousand five hundred dollars times the interest rate. And that's going to be equal to this nine thousand one hundred and fifty. All right, let me clean this mess up because I really screwed up there. So we're going to do $9,150 equals 152,500 times R. So this is amount after 10 years. So we'll just divide both sides by this 152,500, and that will give us the decimal equivalent of the interest rate we earned. So in other words, our R equals 9,150 divided by 152,500, reaching for your handy Desmos app on your cell phone or your calculator. No judgment from me, maybe just a little, but not much. And we type in 9,150 divided by 152,500, and you get this decimal of 0 0.06. So what was the interest rate we earned? Remember, if we want to convert a decimal into a percent, we take that decimal and we multiply by 100, and that turns it into a percent. So this married couple, when they took their 152, or sorry, their $15,250 as their investment, invested it for 10 years, and earned $9,150, they were receiving a 6% simple interest return on their investment. So question five takes the same information. They're saying, let's assume the couple had the same principal, the same $15,250 that they could invest. And that now they actually found a better investment and they earn 9% interest. So recall that 9% as a decimal is 0.09. And we want to know how long would it take to earn an interest of 9,150? In fact, if you read the question carefully, it says, how much more quickly would they have made that $9,150 in simple interest? Recall that under the previous uh, problem, they had invested the money for 10 years. So what we're looking for now is what's the new time? And then we'll compare that to the original 10 years to see how much faster it was. Well, the formula is the same. Interest equals principal times rate times time. This time we do not know the time, but we know the other three pieces. So let's write those in. 15,250 equals fail, 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 fail. That should be the interest that comes first. So 9,150 equals 15,250 times that new interest rate, that better interest rate of 0 0.09, times the time, and now we're going to solve for t. I hope you all are cool with this. I'm just going to divide both sides by this 15,000 times 0 0.09, and then I'll let Desmos do all the work of the multiplication and division all at once. 
So I'm just dividing both sides by this product without actually writing out the multiplication. So our time will equal 9,150 divided by 15,250 times 0 0.09. Grab your Desmos calculators and let's input that. I'm going to just, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do here, 9,150 divided by, notice Desmos gives you that nice fraction bar, and then you just put in your 15,250 times 0 0.09. If you're working with, say, a TI-84 type calculator, you would have to put, actually, it wouldn't matter. You could type it in directly as you see it. Notice our T value then is approximately equal to 6.6666666 forever repeating. Check this handy button right here. Hit that. Uh, let me try again. Hit that and you get 20 over three years. Now I think that number is kind of ridiculous. Who talks like that? What we really want to say is that it's going to take approximately 6.67 years to earn that same amount of money. Notice it took us 10 minus 6.67 years less time to earn this money. So we earned it in 3.3 years faster. So the couple earned $9,150 um, 3.33 years faster than the 6% investment. That's wonderful. One of the key things you should be noting here is when you're investing, you want the highest interest rate you can possibly find. You're going to learn later that simple interest is garbage for investments. You want compound interest. So, y'all, we have crushed lesson 3.1. Let's recap what we've learned. Number one, simple interest is a fixed fee or payment earned on an investment. Oh, that's terrible. Try again. Take two. So we've learned, we've learned that simple interest, number one, uh, it's a, a linear relationship. That means it's a flat amount that's either earned if you're investing or charged if you're borrowing over the length of the investment slash borrowment. That's not a word I couldn't think of what to say there. So it's an unchanged amount, meaning if like at the beginning, if we invested $600 at 5% interest, we're gonna earn $30 every year regardless. So that does not change. There are three formulas, really only two formulas that we need. So the first one is the interest formula. So this calculates the amount of simple interest earned based on the rate and the principal. And the second one is the two versions of the future value formula. So that is the future value is equal to the principal plus the interest. And then if we just insert the formula above in for interest, we get the principal plus the PRT. These together are ways to calculate the future value of an investment or the future cost if we wanted, if we were doing borrowing. These are the two key things. We then took this simple interest formula and we actually um, solved for different parts. So let's say if we knew, uh, if we wanted to calculate the principal, we just took the rate times the time and divided by the interest. Or if we wanted to calculate the time, we took the interest and divided it by the principal times the rate. Or if we wanted to know the rate, we took the interest and divided it by the principal times the time. Boy, that first one looks like it's totally wrong. It is. Ignore that one. The principal is equal to the interest divided by the rate times the time. 
So we showed these things. Um, we solve for these in each case. We didn't do it as a formula. If you prefer, you could use these formulas to calculate principal. Boy, which one is it? Principal or time or rate as a decimal. Don't forget to multiply by 100. So this, if, if we were in, in person, this would look like your reference sheet for your exam. And in fact, when you start doing your homework in Connect Math, I would hold this before you, and you're going to be using um, these, these formulas and this idea to complete the homework. Uh, when we hit the exam time, it's going to be the same type of questions as the homework questions in Connect Math, just it will be for the entire unit.